hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and this is the eighth part for vpc and if you haven't watched the previous parts then i would request you to please watch them and in today's session for vpc we will be talking about the dhcp option set and i'll give you a brief idea of why this is important for vpc networking and here is the agenda for today's session so we will be talking about what is dhcp what are the dhcp option sets that we can configure for our vpc and how we can create a private hosted zone and yes we will have the demos for these so please watch the video till the end so without wasting any more time let's begin so what does aws tell us about dhcp options the dhcp or dynamic host configuration protocol provides a standard for passing configuration information to hosts on a tcp ip network it is not clear, isn't it? And that is why before this, we need to understand a few basic terminologies. Uh, then we will be ready to jump onto the DHCP option sets. So let's begin with that. So what is DHCP? So DHCP or Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol is a network management protocol used on internet protocol networks or IP networks, whereby a DHCP server dynamically assigns an IP address and other networking configuration parameters to each device on the network so that they can communicate with other IP networks. And let's suppose you have an internet service provider for your internet usage and you have the devices that you want to connect to the internet using your ISP and that's your private network, isn't it? But these devices have an IP address that gets assigned by the ISP for its communication. And when you add a new device to your network, a new IP gets assigned to it. That is the same reason why you are able to talk to each other. If you want to experiment on this one, take an Ethernet hub and connect four devices using the Ethernet cable and connect the LAN connection or check the LAN connection. You will be able to talk to each other because of DHCP. And that is why we say that a DHCP server dynamically assigns an IP address and other network configuration parameters to each device on the network so they can communicate with other IP networks. The ISP has a connection to the DHCP server here, which can fetch you an IP from its IP address database from its free IP pool for you to use. That is why you see the concept of BYOD or bring your own device. As with DHCP, it's very easy to configure devices. That is why it is called dynamic host configuration. So if not, you will have to manually configure an IP to the device and other host configurations as well. That's a very big overhead for the network administrators. So I hope you got the point here. Let's move on. So for a network to work properly, there are a set of network operations and configuration that help it to function correctly. And one of the main factors or protocols that helps the network administrator to manage a huge network is DHCP. The best part that I feel is that it automatically sends required network parameters for hosts to communicate properly over the network. So as DHCP is a protocol, it follows a pattern of request, response and acknowledgement. So let's suppose the host is your DHCP client and we have the DHCP server. So the first step is DHCP discover request, which is sent to the DHCP server. So in the first step, when we connect a device or host, it broadcasts a DHCP discover message over the Ethernet network to locate all the available DHCP servers. So that is the first part. The second step is DHCP offer. Here, the DHCP server sends out a DHCP discover offer message and broadcasts the network informations like IP address, DHCP IP, lease IP, NTP server details and all these things to the network itself. And once the client understands that yes, we have a DHCP server that is in the third step, the host actually sends a DHCP request that is for a third step with the IP that it wants to use. In the last step, the DHCP server checks if the same IP was the one that it had sent before in the broadcast. And if it is yes, then it sends the acknowledgement. So we have four steps here. The first one is DHCP discover, where the host actually tries to find out all the available DHCP servers. Then there is an offering made by the DHCP server. 
then the host actually sends the DHCP request, then the DHCP server sends an acknowledgement. So if you have to understand this in the simple terms, the host actually first asks, can you please give me an IP address? The DHCP server says, do you want to use this IP 192.168.22.23? The host says, okay, that's cool. Uh, are you sure I can use this? Then the server acknowledges by saying, Yes, indeed, you can use it. So this is how the DHCP server and the client actually communicate to each other. It's simple, isn't it? Now let's talk about AWS DHCP option sets. So as I've already said this before, the DHCP provides a standard for passing configuration information to hosts on a TCP IP network. And there are configuration parameters that are provided by the DHCP server. So that can be like your domain name, domain name server, NetBIOS node type, NetBIOS name servers and NTP servers as well. And you can configure DHCP option sets for your virtual private cloud. But by default, you have it uh, configured when you create a VPC, but you can also create one for yourself. And now let's talk about some of the options that we have for the DHCP configuration. So the first one that we have here is domain name server. So we can have a configuration set to either Amazon provided DNS or to custom domain name servers if we want to provide that for our instances by which we can translate the DNS to the mapping IP address. For the domain name that we have, if you're using AWS or Amazon provided DNS, then for US East 1, you have to specify ec2.internal. And if you're using Amazon provided DNS in any other region, we have to specify region.compute.internal. Otherwise, we can use a custom domain name as well. Let's suppose I want to use it for Pytholic. I can have something like pytholic.com as well. So this value is used to complete the unqualified domain host names or the DNS host names. And for an example, if I want to cite here, like let's suppose you have private DNS names. So it can be like ip-private-ipv4-address.ec2.internal for US East 1. And it can be like ip-private-ipv4-address.region.compute.internal for other regions. Same way it goes for the public DNS as well. So you have ec2-public-ipv4-address.compute hyphen one dot amazon aws dot com for us east one and the same goes like ec2 hyphen public hyphen ipv hyphen address dot region dot compute dot amazon dot com for other regions and for the ntp servers we can have the ip address of up to four network time protocols servers that we have and if you don't know about what is an ntp server or ntp protocol i'll give you a small example and you can also read about that later so for example if you have 50 instances and they are a part of your network and if i ask you to change the time or check if the time of all the instances are synced or not will you do that manually no you won't right for the same reason we use network time protocol that keeps a synchronization between the times of the instances in the network these instances can speak to the ntp server to keep the time synchronized with each other for the netbios name server we can have the ip address of up to four netbios names servers so the instances running on the windows operating system have a netbios which which is the network basic IO system. If the DNS is dev.pytholic.com, then the NetBIOS name is dev. And if it is pytholic.com, then the NetBIOS name is pytholic. But then there is a difference between NetBIOS and the DNS. So DNS is more important and available for the connections over the internet, whereas NetBIOS is, is always available to the devices connected directly to it. And the fifth one that we have is NetBIOS node type. So for NetBIOS, we have various node types like uh, one is equal to B node that is for broadcast and two that is the P node that uses point to point communication. And four we have that is called the multicast that is M node and eight, which is H node or H node used as a hybrid of both B node and P node. That is basically your hybrid for broadcast and point to point communication. And these are used to communicate to the NetBIOS server. Just like DNS has DNS server for name resolution, NetBIOS has its name server to register and resolve computer names to IP addresses. I know these topics may not be common for many of you out here, but please don't worry about this with respect to the exam. Just remember the option sets that you have with DHCP. And if you're interested, we can make a separate video on this, but for the exam, this is sufficient. So you must always remember we have options like domain name server, domain name, NTP servers, NetBIOS name servers, and NetBIOS node type. 
So if you go to your VPC console, you can see that we have a my VPC demo that we had created previously, and this is the default VPC. So if you right click on the default VPC, you see a edit DHCP option set. So if you click on this one, you have a by default option set already selected. And there are two options here. You can have a no DHCP option set or you can have the default one that you have. And this actually gets associated to all the VPCs that are created after that as well. So for an example, let's suppose I go ahead and create a VPC here by clicking on create VPC and I'll name it my VPC-2 and I'll just give it a side block of 10.0.0.0 slash 24 and that's it i'll just create the vpc you will see that the dhcv option is already set to the default one okay so now here we need to understand what is the difference between both the dhcp types or or what is the difference between if we set the dhcp and if we don't have a dhcp set so how we can check that we have to create instances in both of them and we have to disable the DHCP set in one of the VPCs and we'll check what is the difference. So let's suppose I have this, this is the new one. And if I right click on this one and uh, edit the DHCP option set, I'll see that it is already default. By default, it has been attached. So if I right click on this and I just edit it, I have this default value for this as well. But what I will do is I will create a subnet in this VPC, the new one that I've created just now. And I'll disable the DHCP option set and I'll create an instance in both of them and we'll see what is the difference. So let's go to the subnet and let's click on create subnet. Okay, so I just created a subnet here. So in this VPC, we have this option set enabled but i'll disable it for now so no dcp option set and i'll save it and on this one we have the option set enabled so let's go and create the instance here let's go to instances and i'll launch an instance i am sure that everyone by now is quite familiar with creating the instances but here i'll choose the my vpc2 and I'll choose the only subnet that I have. And let's suppose I enable this public IP, assign auto public IP. Okay, that's it. I don't need to do anything. Just click on add tags. So I'll give it a name and I'll assign the name as my VPC2 hyphen one. So I have to create a new one. Then yes, uh, this should be fine. And just click on review and launch and launch it. And yes, I have this launch instance. Go to the instance that we have. So if I select this instance, if you see, I have a private IP and I have the public IP address as well, but I don't have a private IP before DNS. Okay, so the mapping is not here for me because I have not selected any options. If you don't believe me, what I can go do is I can just create a new instance. And I'll choose the my VPC demo. I'll choose a private subnet. I'll enable this as well. Click on next. Add tags. Add. Okay. And I'll just review and launch. Select an existing one. I have a lot of them, I guess. So I can just choose this and review and launch and launch. Launch instance. Now let's see the instance. So this is the one that I had created for my VPC that I created recently, my VPC2. And this is the one that I created just now for the demo VPC. See, I have this DNS name. So the problem here is, or the default actually property that you have here is with Amazon EC2 instances that you launch into a non-default VPC are private by default. And they're not assigned a public IP4 address unless you specifically assign one during the launch. That is what we did by modifying the subnet that we have for the public IPv4 address attribute. But by default, all instances in a non-default VPC receive an unresolvable host name that AWS assigns. So for example, if you have an IP address, you can assign a DNS name to that. And you can assign your own domain names to your instances if you create a special DHCP option. 
for your VPC. And that is why it is really important for us if we want to have our own domain names to our instances, then we have to create the DHCP options. And if we want to automatically assign them to our instances that we create for the VPC, we have to create a DHCP option set and assign the domain name that we want to provide. And then any instance that we create after that in that particular VPC, the domain name that we want will be attached to it. If you see this, these are the default DNS names that are attached by AWS. As I told you that all the regions apart from US East 1 will have compute.internal region.compute.internal so that is why if you go here you don't have anything if you go here you have it but now let's suppose let's change things so let's suppose i want to have this i can edit the option set and i can assign the default one to the vpc2 that i recently created okay and i'll save the changes so now this VPC that I had created recently also have a DHCP option set and the instance that I have right now will also get a private IP for DNS. Now you might be thinking that I don't have this public IP for DNS in both of them, isn't it? Let's suppose I launch another instance. And I'll tell you what is the difference. So I'll go with the default VPC and I'm not using the other VPCs that I created manually by myself. I'll be using the default one. I'll choose a subnet and I'll enable the public IPv4 address and I'll just add storage and I'll have a name, my default one and I'll name it. Select an existing one, so I can choose this one, yes, I can choose this one and review and launch, launch it. And let's go to the instance and we'll see the difference. Click on this, see, I have a public IPv4 DNS and I have a private IPv4 DNS for my default VPC. Why this is happening for this, but not for the other instances that I have? So my demo VPC-1 only has the private IPv4 DNS because I have a DHCP option set and here as well. But why isn't happening for the public IPv4 DNS? For that, we need to go back to the VPCs and I have to just right click on this one and edit DNS host names. And I have to see that by default for the VPCs that you create, the DNS host names will be disabled. So this indicates whether instances with public IP addresses get corresponding public DNS host names or not. And this is the reason why this segment is really important for you to understand. And if you just click on enable and save changes and go back to the instances, this is the one that we had. If I just refresh on this one, you will see a public IP for DNS assigned to it. Sorry, this one. Yes. Not this one, I'm really sorry, for this one, because this is the one that I changed here. This is the one that I changed here. So this one got its public IP for DNS. So this instance, my demo VPC-1 belongs to this VPC. So I can just right click on this one and I can click on edit DNS host name and I can enable this and save the changes. And when I refresh this, my demo VPC-1 will have its own public IP for DNS. So what you need to remember is when you create a VPC, the DHCP option set will be by default set to the default one. If you right click on this one again, the edit DNS host name will be set to disabled. You have to check this enable to give your public IP for addresses or DNS name. And if you go back and if you right click on this one DNS resolution, it will always be enabled. So these are the ones that we have for the default. DHCP option set. So if you have to create a DHCP option set, what you need to do is you need to go to the DHCP option set in the list of available menu that you have and then just click on this one and you have the DHCP by default already set to this one. So if you can just right click on this and view details, the domain name that you see here, ap-south-1.compute.internal 
if you go to the instances every instance will have a domain name for the same that you have created but for the public one as you already know that you will have compute.amazonaws.com so don't worry about that so it will be region.compute.aws or amazonaws.com and here it will be region.compute.internal so whenever you know that you are hosting it in a particular region then you will understand that all the domain names that you have when it is set by the domain name server of amazon provided dns then it will be starting with the region.compute.internal and here we don't have any NTP servers enabled or NetBIOS name servers enabled or NetBIOS node type also. If I want to create a new DHCP option set, I can just click on create. I can specify the name, my DHCP, and I can just give a domain name for that. And I can just give the domain name servers and NTP server and all the details. And I can provide the tag and I can create one. And based on the domain name I set and the domain name server that I set, the populated values for any instance will be resolved like this. So a private hosted zone is a container for records for a domain that you host in one or more Amazon virtual private clouds or VPCs. So when it comes to private hosted zones, we have already discussed this in Route 53 as to how we can create a private hosted zone and how we can create records in the hosted zone that can help us determine how Route 53 responds to the DNS queries from our domains and subdomains. With the help of which we can send a request to dev.pytholic.com if we have that as our domain and it sends the mapping IP address with which we are able to talk to the server. So let's see how we can create one. When you come here to the Route 53 dashboard, you see a hosted zone tells Route 53 how to respond to DNS queries for a domain such as example.com. Here you see create hosted zone. So click on that or you can click on here as well and you can create your own hosted zone. For example, I want to create something like uh, pythoholic demo.com. So let's suppose this is a domain name that I want to have. And this is my sample dummy private hosted zone. And uh, this is the one that I want to select because this is the private hosted zone that I want to create. So private hosted zone determine how traffic is routed within an VPC or Amazon VPC. So here I have to choose a region. So my region is basically AP South 1 and the VPC that I'm looking for is basically my VPC demo because it has public access and I'll tell you why. So here I have clicked on VPC ID and then I can just uh, click on create hosted zone. So once you have created it successfully, you can see that we have the zone ID. It is private hosted zone. That is a type and it has been assigned to the VPC. That is my VPC demo. And the record count is two. These are the sample records that uh, basically get created. There's the NS record and the SOA record. And here I can create a new record for myself. And uh, when you create a record, you will get the routing policy. So it can be like a simple routing or a weighted routing or geolocation or latency based or failover or multi-value answer. So all these things we have already discussed in the route 53 section. So here I'll just choose simple routing and I'll click on next. And it is asking me to provide a, a simple record definition. So you can just click on define simple record and uh, I'll just give dev.pytholic.com and it should point to a IP address or another value depending on the record type. And this will be my CNAME record. I'll create a CNAME record for this. And here I, it tells me to point to a specific location. So I can just point it to www.pythoholic.com or I'll just point it to amazon.com. Amazon.com you can just click on define simple record. So now you have created your records. Just click on this. So now this record has been created and it points to amazon.com. So how I can validate this? I can just copy this one, dev.pytholy.com. I can go to the instance that I have. What is the instance that I have in this one? So my VPC demo hyphen one, this is basically in my private subnet. So what I can do is I can go to my public subnet. This is the VPC that I had. So I can just copy this and I can try to connect to user at the rate IP address hyphen I. 
the key name and enter okay so i can do a dig and i can so i can paste the cname record that i have which is dev.pythonicdemo.com and the answer that i'm getting is www.amazon.com here so that is how efficiently you can route traffic so I hope you enjoyed this session and the demos as well. And if you have any doubts, then please put them in the comment section below. And that's it from my side for today. I'll meet you in the next one. Until then, it's Pytholic signing off.